Ungulungu Meerkat Group here at the Meerkat Magic Conservation Project in the Meerkat Magic Valley, Utsuren, Western Cape, South Africa. It's the 4th of February 2009, about 25 minutes before sunset, and the Ungulungu Meerkats have just returned to the burrow they're going to be sleeping at. They have not been at this burrow for many weeks now. So it's been one big circuit to get here. As always, I just reassure them that I'm not a threat to them in any way, they know where I am, and gradually lots of social affirmations are starting to happen here. Some of the animals are falling asleep, they've been up since 20 past 5 this morning, and it's now just before 7 o'clock, so a very long day for them. Temperatures have been over 35 degrees centigrade today. Fairly cool day with the strong winds that we've had blowing through the valley. Some of them are grooming each other. It's aloe grooming. The last count I had a few minutes before the group arrived at the burrow was 16 in the group. Out of five babies from the November 2008 litter, only two remain. This is tragic because this group of meerkats has been traveling further and further away to get enough food with the very poor rainfall that we've had over the last few weeks. And they've encountered many rival groups and there have been lots of fights between the groups resulting in the death of some of these babies. Now the group finally has returned to roughly the center of the territory. <laughs> it's moments like this, being out here within a meter of these animals, sharing this incredible trust that I call the meerkat magic, the very essence of just being accepted by wildlife. Of course, none of the animals on the Meerkat Magic Conservation Project have ever been touched by a human hand. I always resist the impulse to try that at the Meerkat Magic Conservation Project. These are not tame animals. This is not a zoo. My research project's ambitions are to protect wildlife in their natural habitat and educate those about the animals who live nearby, especially, and from afar, the value of these animals is immeasurable. The Meerkat Magic Conservation Project subscribes to the philosophy of conservation through education. And I strongly believe that by creating a greater understanding, leading to a better awareness and diluted appreciation, we can have self-motivated conservation taking place. The landowners that I work with are paid subsidies to look at alternative land usage on a more sustainable manner for longer periods of time. So we have conservancies now where wildlife can live without being disturbed by having their burrows plowed over, pesticides used, etc. Now they're protected from all of these factors. And one of the primary ways that the Meerkat Magic Conservation Project does this and achieves this cooperation with the landowners that we work with is by paying them subsidies generated through what I like to call the observe and conserve eco and agritourism in conservation and tourism where people from around the world actually help to protect these very animals and others in this valley by making a contribution towards the subsidies that we give the landowners. Of course salaries are also paid to our local assistants 
will all stay on the various farms that we work on. And previously they were unemployed. Now they too perceive these animals that we protect to be incredible assets because without them they would be without a job. I really see this area as an outdoor classroom being able to be around animals and other wildlife and actually have other people seeing this up close where they would otherwise only get to see this on television or in fact in a zoo <laughs> these afternoon huddles are a good way of conserving the heat it's getting much colder now as the sun begins to drop below the horizon there typically we would see this huddling behavior in late afternoons but also on very cold winter mornings huddling or meerkat scrumming as I like to call it the meerkats are protecting their very sparsely haired underbellies from losing excess heat <laughs> It truly is a privilege for me to stand here watching these animals fall asleep in my presence. And if I'm not extra careful, a slight movement without letting them know about it, and everyone will be incredibly alert. And that's not what I want. So of course by making the calls, I can just reassure everyone that I'm not a threat and they'll carry on as if I'm not here it seems it's very very easy to be lulled into a false sense of security standing here making calls the animals seem completely relaxed and then a little movement like that and everyone is very alert I can lose their trust so quickly if I'm not careful and that's why I never allow myself to become complacent when watching these animals I have been studying wild meerkats full time since 1993 now it's going on to 2009 February and I've never had one day working with these animals that has been the same there's so much to learn about these animals They're incredible and that's it for tonight <laughs>